We rented this camper van for a dollar a day. If you haven't seen our last videos, we are currently in the middle of an epic road trip. We left Adelaide a few days ago, traveled to Victoria and stayed in one of the best accommodations in Australia. We then crossed the Bass Strait on the Spirit of Tasmania before winding our way through Cradle Mountain. We saw so many animals and got to walk through a forest that honestly looked like it was from a fairy tale. After which we drove here to the Riverside Langford Caravan Park. Langford Riverside? to the Langford Riverside Caravan Park, which is where we've woken up today. This morning, we are continuing our journey further south, but we wanted to explain exactly how we book this adventure for a dollar a day and how you can do it too. But before we get into that, let's actually show you the camper van. <laughs> And this is what a dollar a day gets you. We'll start at the front and then end at the back. So we have woken up in one of my favorite caravan parks so far. So everything is sort of in the lounging home mode. We have this set up as a beautiful four person table. The driver and the passenger seat both swivel around so you can enjoy this. And it even extends. This is the easiest thing to set up. You clip it in at one end, pull the leg out and bam, you've got a pretty decent sized table. Bam. bam. <laughs> Underneath there is two outlets and two USB ports. Some of the electronics within the van run just off of the van's power, but then some of it runs off of being plugged in. So we can't actually use the outlets unless we are plugged in at a caravan site, which means no real off gridding unless you are prepared to be completely disconnected. For night time to block out all the lights and have some privacy we do have little shades for all of these windows as well which work really well. They are black so it kind of freaks me out sometimes because it looks like we haven't done it because it just looks dark. Into the kitchen area. In here we have all of the supplies that you should need for your trip including a gas cooktop which we haven't used, a sink which we have used, so I'll close those ones. But when you close them, it actually becomes a pretty decent workspace or storage area. One really cool thing is you can take this bit of the bed out, pull this little bit up. How does it? And somehow <laughs> it stays and you have an extended work area. This isn't awkward. You're not standing on the bed to use this workspace. They've made this little cutout so you can walk in here. I think that's pretty clever. I don't really know how you keep it up there. You'd think it would be simple to work out, but here we are. One negative about this space is they haven't left a cupboard free for your belongings. So we have emptied those two drawers and just put our own things in there. I think these are kind of handles that pop out are quite common for van life because that way it's like all clear and it's properly locked in for while you're driving. The pro... Wow. What was that? This beautiful blue tacked cupboard is very noisy while we drive, so we've shoved blue tack there and it seems to make quite the difference. In here is two different types of kettles. I think they've done that so you can still use the propane tank and heat up water and have a coffee or a tea if you're not connected to an outlet. A toaster and all of the pots and pans, bowls, mugs, cups, cutlery. We also have a microwave, which I didn't think we would get in a van. We haven't, oh no, we have used this. Yeah. We, we made spaghetti from a can. <laughs> I just think that is quite a handy extra to have in a van because it's quick meals, quick eats, just to heat something up. This small section is about all of the storage we have. We have converted this into our pantry. We then have a lovely bench up top, another USB outlet that you can use. And on this side, there are two more outlets. And we even have a little mirror. I think that's it in here, right? Yeah. Both of the beds are sideways along the van, so they're not that long. I can touch both sides right now. So Jordan is quite tall. Six, six foot one baby. Six foot one baby. So he has to sleep diagonal on the bottom bunk like this. And it's still not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which unfortunately means that we are not sleeping in the same bed for this van trip because it would mean I would have to curl up in this little space. This converts into my bed. <laughs> so this top layer pulls across and basically I have to sleep diagonally up there too. It's okay. The mattresses are surprisingly comfy. The duvet is nice and heavy and keeps me toasty warm. We have four pillows, two blankets, one for each bed, and we got four towels, which I think has been quite luxurious. In the back, they have also given us a few supplies, but I haven't really paid attention to what those are, so. 
We really haven't been in here much at all. We're using it for our long-term storage. I guess long-term is relative because we're only in here for five days, but stuff we're not gonna need. There's also hoses for gray water and fresh water and things like brooms and buckets that we'd need for cleaning. One thing I do wish it had is the same as what we had in Canada, where the doors of the van would fold all the way back and you could just sit on this bed. But unfortunately, our bed up the top here is screwed in, so there's no way we'd be able to sit here. Ooh, so relaxing. <laughs> We are using this time to try and think if we did want to do this life, what would we like and what don't we like about these layouts? We wouldn't need a van built for four. I would also really love if there was like a toilet and shower, as well as off grid ability. Unfortunately, with the outlets needing to be plugged in at a caravan site, it means you can't really be off grid, which I think we would want just to be able to enjoy Australia that much more. I don't know, we're hoping to do a couple more of these throughout our time when we're home, just to test out a few different layouts and see if this is something we would want to do because I'm already loving it. Van life's pretty great. But now we are going to go head into Launceston and I think see some monkeys. <laughs> When we heard there was monkeys in the middle of Launceston City, we were confused as well. But there's a cool reason why they're here, and I just hope we can find them in the time we've got a 15 minute park. Closed. Where are the monkeys been moved? Huh? Can you still make, tell me a fun fact as we run back to the car because we only have three minutes? And then maybe Cataract Gorge, seems we didn't get to see this. So these are and were, and I'm assuming they were back, so they will be Japanese monkeys. Apparently Launceston has a sister city in Japan. They swapped a few wallabies for a few monkeys and now they just live here. Apparently to everyone in Launceston, it's just like, oh yeah, the monkeys in the park. Where else are the monkeys gonna be? But to everyone else, it's like, you have Japanese monkeys in the middle of your city. Ah, ah. Almost hairless monkey. <laughs> Monkeys were a little bit disappointing, but we've come to Cataract jo George. George, Cataract George, he can't see so well. So we've come to Cataract Gorge instead. We have actually been to Launceston before and we didn't end up coming here. So I thought if we didn't get to see the monkeys, we may as well come see this. And that's the joy of having your own house. Plus, quickly whipped up a coffee for us to take. I love van life. Launceston was the first southern hemisphere city to be powered by hydro. Wow. That's really cool. Good on your lawny. Yeah. We just came here thinking it was going to be a lookout or a viewpoint of some kind, but there's so much more here than I ever thought. There is a pool behind me, this amazing picnic area with barbecues and everything, a kid's playground, a chairlift, a funicular, a museum. The list is endless. We're going to do a quick 10 minute basin walk, which should take us to the bridge. I'm already happy. <laughs> and apparently it's not just any chairlift either. It holds a record. We did really want to go on it, but it's $20 per person return and that's just way, way out of our budget. But it is the, what is it, the longest? The world's longest single chairlift span. Pretty cool. Yeah. It would be really good, but just too much for us. Yeah, even $15 one way is a bit rich. <laughs> I know, can you give us a little, little shake of the tail feather? Oh my goodness! You are gorgeous. Is that other peacocks? Apparently there's peacocks here. Oh, hey Siri, are peacocks native to Australia? Endemic. Oh, Alex Peacock Plumber. Oh my god, I don't want to call him now. Hey Siri, are peacocks endemic to Australia? Oh, she went away. Hey Siri, are peacocks endemic to Australia? Peacocks are actually the male members of the peafowl species of bird and not native to Australia. They were introduced during the colonial period by the British who brought them as pets. Oh, we have a growing problem with wild peafowl. I wonder if these are wild peafowl. They swallow the water and carry disease. Oh, and can be aggressive to humans. Humans? Oh, oh my God. Hey, buddy. All right, you get right away, buddy. I'm so sorry. 
And the female one, which is like the gray, normally looking one, was burying herself in the sand. There's so much more here than we thought. We are further than that. Jordan Nicholas de Haas, please do not swing the bridge. We met two people and they said that this bridge swings quite a bit in the middle, so I'm a bit nervous, but there's a sign not to swing it. Just a reminder for someone behind the camera. The weather is slowly turning on us a little bit, so we're gonna continue our journey down south and on the way, tell you a little bit more about this dollar a day rental. Something for lunch slash breakfast? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Emily makes us some um, breakfast for lunch. I'm gonna talk a little bit about where we book this dollar a day rental and where you can get it as well. One thing I am loving about van life is having our own kitchen anywhere we are. So like just halfway through this drive, we're hungry. So we've pulled over and we're gonna have a really late breakfast because it's like midday, I think. The moment you guys have all been waiting for, I assume, since you clicked on this video, the place we rent these $1 a day relocations for camper vans like this is called coseats.com. Jordan from the future here. If you wanna support this channel, please use the link we've put in the description below to book your $1 a day relocation and then come back and comment exactly what it is you've done so that we can tell Cosits you've come from us and get a little bit of commission. It goes a really long way to supporting a little channel like ours. Okay, back to the video. It's just a deal I think you really should know about, especially if you're traveling Australia, which can be very expensive. Yogurt, berries, and granola became one of our favorite breakfasts while we were traveling this year, mainly because it was so budget friendly. This little tub cost five dollars but in South America it was so cheap and feels healthy and delicious you can't go wrong <laughs> I think it's raining poor Jordan's out there in the rain the way it works when companies like Apollo Hertz or Brits need their camper vans relocated they approach co-seats to find someone to do it for them essentially co-seats is just bringing us and the company together in exchange for a fee I will say you do have to be pretty flexible if you're wanting to book something like this. They give you a set of time, but it is pretty structured. And honestly, it's as easy as that. I thought it was too good to be true when I first saw it as well. This is the second one we're doing, so I can speak pretty highly of it. It is raining. We haven't done too much planning past this point, but the goal is to spend the night on Bruni Island. I know they have at least one caravan park and only one fuel station. So we're gonna try and fill up, get to the ferry, see how much that costs, cross over, find somewhere to stay. When are we starting that video? <laughs> Honestly, it seems like everywhere we go, we park near a Brits van or a Brits van comes and parks near us. Britsies stick together. Uh, 